honestly don't see a single problem with that. I think it was, I think it was smooth. So smooth. I mean, it's a good way to start me off muted, which is hopefully what most people have me on anyway. I don't think anyone really noticed, did they? No. I think also everyone true. was just like, oh yeah, demo's talking, we're just not hearing it. No. Nope. Well, here we go. Welcome everybody. We are going to be looking over Reject versus Talon today. As we've mentioned there on the desk, we're going to be headed over to Villa. Mm -hmm. Bit of a treat for you and I, Demo. Get to cast a little bit of APAC. Know, what's going on? This is new. Certainly but, is. I mean, we, we've had experience with APAC before. Let's, let's not, we're all coming in here as if we're, we don't know nothing. We've seen plenty of APAC, you know, Cyclops has scarred us like many other people. So we have an idea what this region can bring, of course, but Cyclops, of course, are much more in their own little spectrum compared to other sides that are coming in. Rejects, I think, has been a big talk of the town for, honestly, since like the past year. You know, we, we've heard a lot of people talk about Rejects never quite hitting the mark compared to what, you know, Sandbox went on to do, what Damon Kia, more importantly, has went on to do. So, yeah, I'm excited to see Rejects here. It's a tough challenge for them because they're against Talon and another uh, side who, like Rejects, a team that we're starting to hear a lot more about, isn't it? These are really the next two up to try and compete against Cyclops, Sandbox, and of course, that one here who have kind of been the main staples for, for quite a while here in APAC. It is, and it's an interesting time for it to all be happening as well, because you mentioned there that it seems as though the top of APAC are getting even better, because we see this sort of progression and development from the likes of Dan Wonkier, from the likes of Sandbox now, that are putting in a consistent good performance. So for me, I think it's a very good time that we're seeing this sort of development yep. and progression top through bottom inside of the region. We're going to kick things off today. Talon starting off on the defense. Reject going to be starting off on the attack. Going to be headed to Aviator and Games here to kick things off with a fairly typical extension over into Statuary. The bands. Quite a strange set of bands here, Demo, especially given some of the discussions that you and I have been having um, a little bit earlier on today. We were talking about the sort of Finker Nook sort of ban criteria, yep. if you will. Obviously, Valkyrie and Mirror there both being removed, so some pretty strong defender bands coming in. But that, that Finker Nook ban, you've got a really interesting theory about this, haven't you? Yeah, Finker at the moment is very good. Very, very good. Everyone knows that. The LMG speaks for itself. Gone six nades, the whole shebang. And I've been a big advocator about why are teams not banning Finke? If something's that good, why are you not going and banning it? You know, it's something that we see from, from other MOBAs. You know, I do compare Siege sometimes to MOBAs because we have, you know, certain characters who do different things. You can ban them away, like, you know, other classical MOBAs that you would see. So why can we not treat that the same? If something's really good, why are we allowing it to get played every single time? And the theory that's kind of came in is if you ban Finka, then typically the next best operator with nades is going to be a Nook. And as we know, Nook is a very different operator compared to Finka, whereas Finka is very loud and proud with the, the gadgetry and the, the weapons, whereas Nook is very silent. Nook can, of course, bypass cameras, which is one thing that we've seen a lot of. Bulletproof cameras have been a big thing. Whenever operators like Malusi we see shine through. Jaeger, of course, always going to be a mainstay. These are operators that can bring those bulletproof cameras and straight away, that's where Nook can be so decisive. And it's more of a team preference where teams, they would rather play against Finka than have a crouch walking Nook. But in this instance, we're seeing both bands. Yeah. Absolutely, especially when you've got the, the Valkyrie and the Mirror withdrawn, you know, you're going to need those bulletproofs. Uh, we're not seeing them too heavily led into here. Misa is going to have one placed out there as the mute. So far, we're seeing Talon do a very good job of battling back here against this attacking push. Window actually going to be first picked there inside of bathroom, I believe. That's not a great. That's not, that's not a great operator to be losing straight off the rip. And I say straight off the rip. There's 50 seconds of the round left. So there really isn't a lot of time at all. This utility has not been sufficiently chewed through. Salty now looking to try and make a bit of impact there, as he's going to be on the great gridlock. Play. They're gone. Not the typical operator that you would be looking toward. Obviously very slow, and when time is of the essence, not ideal at all. There has been an attempt for some sort of vertical play here, but it really hasn't come to anything. A little bit of a push up the stairs is going to give Take a nice kill over onto Marble. Misa there immediately there to trade it out as Salty is going to go down. Take going to try and push his way on in. He's got a little bit of support here, but look at that for a crossfire. Wonderful stuff. And it's going to leave Candy and Tara in a pretty difficult situation with the Diffuser cold. A desperate push through into the vault. It was only ever going to lead one way. 
Good stronghold. Starting things off from the defense. Uh, I, I think Talon didn't really feel any pressure at all. That's what it felt like for me. Uh, I think Reject went into that. They tried, I think, to do too many things there at one point. I think Villa is a very big map, and usually Villa, it's all about refrags. That's what it all comes down to. We talk about crossfires, these strong positions that defenders can hold. You need to make sure that if you're going in for those trades, somebody needs to be there to follow up. It just felt very separate from the players of, of Reject there. We had players coming in from below in towards living room, which, you know, we see a lot with the nades. We've seen Yana go in, use two nades. Didn't get any kills, though, which is probably the biggest thing. If you're going for that play, you need to make sure you have the nades to get those yeah. kills from below. And then at the same time where they're, they're kind of trying to go for nades from below and then work up main stairs, then they've got this whole thing over in bedroom and they're trying to open up a triple wall. They yeah. can't because there's a kide and there's Thatcher open, but they're not bringing Thatcher. I was literally just going to say, yeah, I'm and, glad and you mentioned it. Whenever your ace is the first player that dies, that shows that the entries are on the wrong side of the map because that means that clearly Ace has tried to get something going, realizing that, hey, there's a minute to go. We've done absolutely nothing in terms of map progress. I have to do something, and then he gets taken out. And then if he's gone, you can't do anything anyway. We could, we could spend the next three minutes talking about that round because there were just so many problems. What I'm going to address is what we've got in front of us now. So different. And that is the lineup that Reject to bring in. So they've just been essentially brick walled by utility. Yep. Thatcher's open, as you mentioned, Demo. Yep. However, they've not chose to bring Thatcher. Instead, they've chosen to bring, you know, the sledgehammer. Mm. Not quite literally, sledge isn't picked, <laughs> but they're using a sledgehammer to crack open a walnut here. They've got a ying and they've got a blitz. That is something that you bring if you want to have a heavy pushing power, if you want a really big beachhead to mount your attack from. So far, they're seeing a little bit of early success. Window. He's taken Soldier he down. Just up, up a window and he's just got a kill I from think he was so getting lucky, but you take all the fortunate. luck that you get at this point, especially when it's a Wamai, because those discs now that generate over time are no longer a factor. And having that opening kill is going to be so important whenever you're going for such a, a blitzneck strategy where this is either going to work or it's just not. It is, it's all in. This is where you push all your chips into the middle, and if you manage to get the luck of the draw, then it'll work so well for them. All the Yings go in, the Blitz trying to push through. Talon are still in it though. A down has happened onto the Blitz via the smoke and they're still in it. Hetty may be looking to get aggressive knowing that the Blitz has been down. He's going to take a walk outside a statue. Turns away at the wrong time. But no, never mind. Marble is there to eliminate Taki who was looking to hit them. So they have been stalled out. It's kind of worked, but in reality, Ollie, they've used everything and they haven't got what they've wanted, which is probably that diffuser going down. Especially now when you're left with what have we got? We've got a Blitz and a Gridlock. We've got two really, really slow operators, and only one of them's got a decent and there's gun. there's a shield. And the oh other no. one's got a shield. So it's very difficult. There's still it's utility tricky. to try and deal with, which isn't going to happen now. I'd like to draw your attention to the top left of your screen. Two nades have been left in pocket with, uh, I think it Tacky must be Tate. Like using it. Yeah, Tacky going down without actually having those nades available. Um, so a little bit of a misfortune there. Now the approach is to go below and see if they can get anything happening vertically. We hear the last Toxic Babe canisters going out now. A little bit of barbed wire is going to be the sound cue as the Gon6 goes off to remove that. We know where one player is. Taddy getting himself cut down there by Marble. Now it is a clean two versus one. One versus one. The Diffuser is going to be cold on the ground. 30 seconds is going to be enough time, however. And we do have the final swing coming in from Hedy. That LMG just giving the game away a little bit. It's Gets the red ping. Bulletproof mm -hmm. still up. Again, coming down to the utility usage here from yep. Talon. So you have to say that Reject, that was a lot closer, but still the same outcome. You lose the round. Okay, you've, you've tried now two different ways. You've tried the more typical take, where you try and use nades from below, push across, you know, the whole shebang that we expect to see from Villa. But then they've also went for a rush play. And like I said, you're going all in. If that rush doesn't work the first time, and whenever things kind of slow down and peter out, it's not going to work again. We know that. Those rushes are only designed to hit them whenever the teams are not ready. Talon, you have to give credit to the smoke. You have to give credit to Hedy. What he was able to do with that perfect smoke grenade to stop blitz planting in concrete won them the round single-handedly. As soon as that diffuser goes down, you then have to wedge through gridlocks that'll be going down. Then, of course, you're still in a 2v2. You have to go through the blitz then, who's very good at just peeking, finding information, seeing who's diffusing. So, yeah, the smoke, you have to give credit. That was really where the play came in. And, and that's that, it's good to see from Talon. I think whenever you do get hit with a rush strategy, you do feel like a bit of a fool. 
don't you? You know, as a defense, you should be ready for that. But I think rushes, because you don't see them all too often, you don't expect them. Isn't that it? It's like, yeah. oh, no one's that crazy. No, no, no. This is APAC. Of course they are. Exactly. They're willing to take that risk. And now we're seeing them almost flip-flop again back to something more similar to what we saw brought in round number one with Reject opting for a much more traditional lineup here. And it's a lineup that I really agree with. I commented on how the gridlock isn't the de facto pick. It's a great pick, but you are slow. And if you're going to be trying to play quick and you're going to be leaving players in positions that you know aren't ideal, you can't afford to be slow as well as having everything else stacked up against you. So the Nomad gets brought in instead, which is a, which is a wonderful pick. Up. The Flores for me is the big one, but what are we dealing with, Demo? We're dealing with Kitchen. Yep. And what do you usually deal with when you attack Kitchen? Pulse. You usually My deal favorite. with a pulse. And not just a pulse, but a pulse that has assistance. Yep. A C4 in the hands mm -hmm. of a mute. Mm -hmm. Something else that they can now look to try and call out for. Flores drones are going to work in and try and open up a bit of these lines of sight. That's, that's both ways at the moment. Those lines of sight are going to work just as well for Demic below as they are going to work for Reject above. Demic needs to watch out that I don't copyright him for name infringement. One thing I've noticed. It's entirely different. <laughs> it's very close. Though. There isn't many players who have similar names to mine. No. I don't true. think we'll find anyone with yours. No? A one of a kind? You nope. Ollie? No one's Ollie? called Ollie. No one's called Ollie. <laughs> Uh, but no, the Pulse is a great pickup. The information that you can find out from above, you can just call out to everyone. Okay, we've got two guys coming in towards Laundry. You can also see Pantry Stairs, which, as we know, is usually an area that we would see the odd kind of late roamer uh, hit and to give that information. And there's nobody Pantry. You can roam back up into sight. It's great information all around. And, of course, like you mentioned, comboing C4s with other operators. You know, Mute is a very common pick for Kitchen. You can really lock down that top floor, deny that drone work happening. Uh, but, again, I worry now for Reject because it's kind of coming back to what happened in the first round, Ollie, where they have all these players alive, but they haven't really done anything. You know, there's yeah. a minute gone. Wall has just only been opened. They've got very little pressure in towards the top floor. And again, this is where Demic is great because he can call out all this information and it just allows then teams to start swinging. And there we go. Tana tries to walk in. Nikki gets shut down. And Marble is, is happy enough to just sit now in a corner and just feed off that information. However, though, Candy has found two kills in this round and it really has opened things up. Marble in a pretty key position here as he is going to be the sole survivor. Might find himself one, but will be unlikely to find two. Fluffs the shots there and gets re-picked by Salty. Will eventually be taken out. You've got to question how Talon really played that one, but look at Window. Front and centre, right at the bottom of your screen. We mentioned on the desk that mm -hmm. this is the hype oh, man. This is Nora Rango vibes I've ever seen. This, any. this is the energy and the vibes of the team. The rest of the team, fairly reserved. Um, they should be. They've got one round so far. They're doing well. They're on attack on Villa. It isn't the easiest thing in the world. But you look at that energy that Window brings in, and that is going to give that morale boost. And slowly but surely, those smiles start to creep into the other face cams as well. And we see the team just start to believe in themselves a little bit more. One thing I want to go back to, Demo, is how that last round was played. Demic played Pulse, and Heady played Mute. They both had a C4. No C4 kills. There was no C4 kills, but not only that, both of the C4 were thrown as Hail Marys, no information, just a little bit blind. When you have that when you have that scanner, when you've got the heartbeat scanner on pulse, it should be guaranteeing you a, a, a C4 kill. Here's the thing though with how Reject attacked that. They didn't really go upstairs. If you look at actually how they attacked that, they had a bit of everything. They had players coming in from laundry, a player coming in from pantry, and then the rest of them kind of coming in from uh, from the China door. That was it. There wasn't really upstairs play. And then you have to kind of question Talon and say, OK, if they're not going above and they're trying to spread themselves out, then you have to question the roamers at that stage. Yeah. Because if you're trying to move in, you know, where the big clock is, there's about three different angles you can get killed from. Why are we not seeing the roamers have more of an impact? Is it a case of that round they just lost their ones? Yep. Is, is that just it? Is, is that literally? Well, I mean, that is usually what it comes down to is who wins the gunfights. It is, as Des always says, it's, it's a shooter. You have to kill people. And if you don't do that, you, it doesn't matter how good you are. Thank you.
This is looking like a quite nice oh, setup here. We go we've got the smokes coming in. We've got the blitz storming in through the site. There's a glass on the board as well. Look how deep Take has been able to get himself here. The toxic babe canisters are going off. This is as explosive as you like. A plant going down with 10 players remaining alive, and that plant will be confirmed. Window, he's going to have an opportunity to try and watch onto this on the glass as Candy has joined Take inside of the vault here. Picks himself up one. Knows there's a chance that there will be more. It's going to be heady that is next on the chopping block, taken down as well as wow. Demic tries to do something, but Candy's going nuts. That F2 is singing inside of the vault. The final kill comes through, and there we get to see Window giving it a little bit of a fist pump yet again. Two rounds on the bounce here for Reject. You know, it's crazier than one rush. Two rushes. Two rushes. Would you have expected to see the second rush? Is this, is this going to be like Rush Impossible Challenge 100% when they go for the third? It's, yeah, I, I'm... Yeah, I, whenever I seen that blitz come in, the, the exact same avenue where you jump in through the window and you go straight into sight. That's exactly what G2 did the other night. If you managed to catch it, Ollie, where it was Doki on the blitz and he did exactly the same thing, walked straight into maps, in the vault and has that control. But here's the difference that what G2 did compared to what we've just seen rejects is as soon as blitz has that control, Everyone has committed to that, yeah. and that's why that works. That's where G2 didn't really pick up that round win because they just left the Blitz in by themselves. As soon as Blitz was in there, how quick did it take Candy to get in behind him? Because he knows that's the safest position. Seconds, yeah. That, that is a, a deployable shield in a sense for that F2, just to sit behind, feed that information, and just pick them one by one by one. Yeah, it was a great play. And it, I think that's the sort of commitment that you see inside of APAC because they are often touted as very aggressive and very loose in the play style. When you add that little bit of sprinkling that is a bit of structure and a bit of a plan, there was a lot of coordinated smokes that went in yeah. on that round. We had upside down repel from Glass on the window. The yeah. There was so much going on. And then as soon as that go button is pressed, and in this case, the go button was the blitz it's, storming it's in. It's the mentality of everyone's they win it. as a team, they lose as a team. Yeah. That's it. You know, it's not, oh, that's on you, that's on us. It's an us thing, not not a you thing. That's the that's the kind of difference that we're seeing with rejects is they will commit to those rushes. It's not often that we, you know, whenever a team goes for a rush, which does happen in every region, for it to not work and then try another rush usually doesn't happen because if the rush doesn't work the first time, you just, you, you put it away. That's it, done yeah. for that week. We never go for that rush again, that's it. But then they've went for another rush. Got to treat every round as as new and as fresh as the last and if you do want to just chain rushes back and back and back back to get you know you're going to get some sort of success eventually mm -hmm. um and reject have found a couple of good rounds there once again we're seeing that switch back that reverting to uh, a little bit of something more traditional with a lot of nade play going on in this round we've got four nades being brought they haven't really been too effective on those nades and we've not really seen anywhere near as much vertical nade play mm -hmm. as uh, as would be typical but the job is going to be slowly but surely getting done. Still no Thatcher, which I think is maybe something we'll, we will question right up until the bitter end here, given that whilst Reject have picked up a couple of rounds, they've struggled to really chew through that utility. I think it's a case of they don't know how they fit the Thatcher in, because they probably look at other operators and think, no, we need that. You know, you, yeah. obviously you need the hard breach because what would the point of bringing a Thatcher if you don't have the hard breach to go with it? I think there's just favor in the nades. You're not going to take away an LMG from window. No way. Oh. Well, maybe you might need to because he isn't having the greatest of games, Ollie. One and four is where he sits. Gets caught out with a C4, which it's very common to see that happen uh, and to see window fall for that. Yeah, it's a big surprise. Could be a freebie here as That's the yellow thing comes through. Salty is going to pick himself up. A very nice kill there on to Demic and grab that kill back. Window, unfortunately, falling on the very same. I don't think we really saw him have uh, too much of an impact there on the Zephyr, especially considering you bring in that LMG. However, things have been equalized somewhat, and then some, as Hedy isn't sitting on 100% health either. This time really starts to concern me. We're seeing the drones starting to flood through, but 30 seconds, and we know that there hasn't really been too much dealt with in terms of utility. What a Gets name! Down. Does get himself down for the trouble, but the plan's going down on the other side demo, so attention cannot be drawn here. Candy grabs himself a freebie on to Hedy as he just gets taken out, swinging that corner, and Marble now left in the one versus two. Salty, of course, being down. We can't count him as an active participant in this round with a gun. However, he may find himself a little bit of info if he can crawl into position. No need here 
for Reject to start getting overzealous. No need for them to really extend here. They could still have a little bit of information. There's certainly a bit of info available for Marble as that Bulletproof is going to watch his back here and alert him if anybody does swing through. That's going to be the only call that Take needs to pick himself up the final kill inside of that round. Reject, Demo, they're going to take a bit of a lead. They have pulled it back extremely well. Uh, we mentioned uh, with, with Window getting eliminated very early on, what killed him, Ollie? Uh, a C4. What would have been great to deny that plant going down? Uh, I mean, you can use a lot of things. Some people like to use uh, C4s. Moments like that that you don't think about actually has quite a big impact. If that C4 kill is being used just to kill a player in the window, that's one less thing to worry about denial. You have to remember where that main plant spot is. It's right beside the bomb chassis, tucked in to statue. It's a blind spot. You cannot be seen from any angle with a gun. So the only way you can do it is you have to sprint head first into the statue, which you aren't, aren't going to do because there's a bunch of holes and a rush strategy. It's just they, they held it so well the first time, but then they couldn't do it the second, which is probably the, the strangest uh, thing. Did you see that? We got a glimpse for a second demo. Look at what's been brought, man. Wow. We've got the Thatcher. We've spent a good portion of the rehos there talking about, ah, oh, Thatcher this, Thatcher that. Yep. Are we going to see it? Are we going to not? We finally got the Thatcher. Not only have we got the Thatcher, we've also got a Flores into the mix. You said, what would you throw up? What would you throw away? What would you give up? Well, give up the flank watch. Yeah, no man. Because we haven't really seen talent do too much yeah, flanking. Very it's static. Very static. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only kind of play that we've seen was, I think it was like one round where Hetty was able to like slip out a statue to try and challenge a guy by pig window. But then that, that was that, that was it, really. There's been no occasions where we went, oh, here comes the big, there's been none of that. There's been no big flanks. Uh, they have still brought oh, the guy. Oh man, just as we got excited about it. What? It's been changed. Yeah, don't say, I mean, just. It's been seventh pick. Let it happen. Um, this means that the Kai is going to be really good now. Because no Thatcher, nobody's going to be able to really hinder, maybe apart from a Twitch drone, if it can sneak in. But then again, it, it can sometimes be, be tricky to get that Twitch drone uh, into a good position. All it takes is a single bullet. That It's not that strong, Ollie. If it could just be shot. Yeah, it's... I don't know. I find you know? Twitch really, really tricky. I think a good Twitch player is invaluable because... We saw what Candy was doing when he was pushing into the vault and, you know, really getting aggressive and using that F2. Yeah. And then you throw the Twitch drone, the shock drone into the mixture as well, and it just becomes a little bit more deadly and dangerous. I can only imagine that that Rotero drone just ran out of charge before it was able to make its way Ten to the counter, barbed wire. Um, obviously, you can't drive those things around forever. They're on a limited that timer. That would be a fun buff. I, I think it would be a little bit too much, probably. Drone um, racing. Because you could just start in spawn then. Could I be the voice of the drone racing? Uh, no, that jo no, that job's been... I'm not sure. That's filled, I'm pretty sure, in that position. This is the value that you get yeah, out of the mm -hmm. Twitch. You know, And you don't need to bring the Thatcher if you're going to be this effective with the Twitch shock drone. For my money, it shouldn't have gotten this far. Let's be honest. It's already picked here. up one piece of utility. It's searching out for this mute jammer. I imagine that it's going to get shot out fairly soon. We've taken out the camera on 90 as well. That's a huge amount of util gone. I'm surprised that he hasn't pursued that, that mute drone because that would be great to, to slip in uh, the, the Flores drones. However, oh, the mute... There. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the mute jammer does manage to get it. I was wondering where is it, but it's in behind the shield. So as that jumps and tries to detonate, it will be caught. And there goes the mute jammer. See, this is what he should have done. And to be fair, he's done that. And also so been able to keep the Twitch drone alive still. Oh, great kill from Hedy, though. I don't think that Tado was actually anticipating Hedy had pushed down onto those main stairs. And just on the crossover, Hedy's been able to pick him up. This causes a lot of issues now, Ollie, because we always mention that you need at least one player to go towards study, just to put a bit of pressure on the players who may be at the, the top of the stairs, stops people rotating in towards study. Without him now, this makes things very difficult for Reject, because then they have to either send over another player, which they have done. It looks to be Window has taken up the mantle. But now that leaves you one short for actually getting that plant down in towards the vault door. Bit of a pre-fire there from Window, trying to pick up anybody inside of the site through those soft walls. Take going to be pushing up those main stairs as Where well now. Fire? Toxic Babe canisters being used. We're seeing nades starting to be cooked as why my discs are going to be slowly burnt out. That one, however, will catch. And it's going to allow Demic a bit of a swing here. He does a bit of chip damage, but Window's pushed up very aggressively here. Vert nade kill coming in from Salty as Window shuts him down as well. Take going to be pushing his way on through that games room door. Hedy picks the double on the round, but it's not going to be enough. 
Five seconds left. Plant being attempted. Candy, no option but to try and stick this now. Amisa needs to push in and find something. The pre-fire isn't successful. The plant goes down. Window picks the kill. Very, very fine margins there. If that pre-fire had been a little bit different, we maybe could have been seeing a bit of a comeback there. But Reject pick up yet another round and storm their way through onto this next half. They have gotten away with murder, Ollie. How they've won that round at 30 seconds with literally no walls open, very little pressure towards the, the zombie door, and they still managed to win that round. And do you know what was really important? What was really good timing? As we've seen Window push in to eliminate that player inside of maps, do you see a nade kill went off? That was a nade onto the player inside of all that would have killed Window. The timing of everything there was yeah. brilliant as Window goes to the swing. The only thing that's going to kill him is either the player he's swinging onto, which he, he, he won't lose that, though, because he's going to have that peeker's advantage. But then it's going to be that man in Vault who can then swing and stop that kill from happening. You eliminate that Vault kill, you're getting two. You're getting two, and you're not losing anyone as well. That's the biggest thing about that. The player downstairs with the nade is going to be completely safe. And, of course, Window, if nobody's there to kill him, he's going to be safe as well. Something that's really impressed me from Rejects is their ability to time things. The teamwork has been phenomenal. And, and it's not it's not an easy thing to do, and it's something that a lot of teams do aspire to get to, is to all be in a position where they are flexible enough to say, this is the go time, is everybody is everybody okay with that? And everyone's like, yep, 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 yep. We're, and we're just going to go in and we're going to commit. It's very rare that you would see nade kills happen that late on from yeah. below. Yeah. Typically, if teams are going for, you know, nades from below, they'll take, you know, the first half of the round just yeah. to purely do nade. No, nobody is in the building. They're just simply trying to get nade kills using drones. Whereas this is now a bit more of a of a different situation where we're seeing kills in combination with people actually pushing into sight along with nade kills. We don't see that. It's like you're calling an artillery strike as you're pushing into the battlefield. Very well timed indeed. Switching things around now. Reject's going to kick off on the defense. Talon, got a lot of salvation to do here, especially given that they are going to be on the attack now. And they come for a much more different approach here, Demo. Take going to be given a freebie How does there. that happen? Marble, how do you not know he's there? Where's the drone? Jackal, for goodness sake. But where's sake. the drones? Where's the drone? Where's the Inox? Where's anything? You can't just take you out got the a default. Call. Very, very difficult to watch. You know, you look at this lineup and you think, Dokubi, Jackal, there's going to be drones. No, no you know, problem with, with there drones. Shouldn't, there shouldn't be any roamers here. Information. Like, we yeah. should be able to get some info on these guys. We, we need to know where they are and stuff. The call comes out, but it's a little bit late. The DMR isn't the best weapon to be pre-firing with, especially through that sort of an angle. Going to post up on the upside down repel. No one's being given a real reason to move at the moment. Nothing to be found there success-wise. You can drone out as much as you like of this aviator side and you will not find all too much. The ground is there for the taking. And one thing as well about that that happening, you know, seeing a roamer get that first kill against this team comp, is you're attacking Kitchen. Of course there's going to be roamers. Nobody does a five-man turtle inside a kitchen. They're going to be out and about hunting for kills, trying to gain the upper hand, because they know that this bomb site isn't the most favorable sometimes for defense. So you have to go out of your way, and you have to try and disrupt the attackers. And see that happen is very surprising. Window always tried his hand, but Soldier, the ARX is always going to win that. Still a very strong weapon at this moment. We talk about the LMGs that ARX only still hits as hard as one. It's an absolute truck, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Great little drone bait as well there. I think it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do and hold your nerve for, but Soldier ready to take on the challenge. Does something to grab that kill back as a trade. There's still a little bit of a ways to go here as they're working in toward this kitchen dining site. Salty going to be way upstairs. There's no what one that's really going to be looking to try and challenge on to him. Doka before comes through. Demic picks himself up one before Candy hits him with the refrag. Three versus three now, so all things fairly square, and there's a lot of info available here as well. But Candy peaks, and he didn't really need to. Two kills for Talon. The plant's going to start to go down, and Salty's location is going to be known. Goes for the switch, tries to get himself in through tarps here. Was trying to hit some nice one taps, but it was not to be. Demic, star of the round there as the sledge really in the engine room of the site, putting the work in. That is now kind of both times where we've seen that kitchen be held and neither attacking force have any interest in upstairs. Not looking to go above, not looking to play the verticality, just opening a few walls and then just kind of walking into the site. It was more China focus coming in from Kitchen uh, whenever we seen Rejects. This time from Talon, they went a little bit more in towards the tarp room, didn't they? 
So, yeah, it's it's very strange to see attackers not go above and still have a good success winning uh, that bomb site. Because that's the standard way to take it. Of course it is. Especially when you're going to bring a sledge. This means nothing in this region. <laughs> My little EU heart is crippled right now. You're, you're like classic tra I can't, traditionalist mindset just, of Siege. You see what Cyclops has done to me. Yeah. This is exciting though. The edge. I, I'm, it's, it's new fundamentals. It's nice to watch something different. New techniques that yeah. I've never seen. I just, I feel as if other regions could honestly learn something. I think they will. Honestly. They will. The rise of Apex. Tim's already thrown his, his hat in the ring as well. What do you mean? We recorded some content yesterday and Tim said some words that he also said, and I'm happy for you to clip this. And he has really made a big... Oh, so he he's said Apex going to win in a major or something thrown a flag like that. in the ground for, has for Apex, yeah. He did the same with Brazil, to be fair, and how's that ended up? I mean, he wasn't wrong. What a year. <laughs> yeah. Not just what a tournament from whatever team, what a year for Brazil they had. Maybe APAC up next, but I think North America at the moment, Ollie. You can't can't uh, can't doubt them. I really like some of these uh, keeper barricades that have been placed up. We haven't really had a chance to to talk about just how good this army has really kind of fit it into this meta. It's I do see her as she has five pocket deployable shields in a way. That's yeah. that sometimes I think you can kind of look at it as it's there just to give a bit of a cover, but it is also just really good at making areas that are very tricky to hold easier to hold. It's almost what I think the kind of envision of Thunderbird was, where you could just constantly take damage and then heal yourself back up. Whereas Thunderbird, we know, didn't really have that same impact, because it is tricky sometimes to, to really maneuver around. Whereas I think the Kiba Barrage, it gives you that, that maneuver, doesn't it? It allows yeah. you to block lines of sight, allows you to have a bit of freedom. It lets you walk without having to be shot. It's a time thing as well, right? Those can be deployed Soaks very utility, quickly. Which is nice as well. And th it's doing a lot to soak up here because Candy's basically had almost everything removed here. The nade comes through the brilliantly sink. timed. We didn't see very many nade kills from Reject, but Talon are going to be kicking off here. Salty, difficult challenge here, but no, the player looks the wrong way. Grabs one, traded three instantly. <laughs> three on the round just from main stairs. Can he find the fourth? Deals some chip damage in onto window. Very heavy advantage here as the nade comes through. It was close. Stuns now as well, starting to make this even more difficult. Those Vets Clangles are going to be no good, I'm afraid, Window. Everybody is already well advanced up that main stair. Still two nades left as well. There's one of them going to be talked stack. Soldier still has another one in the pocket. All of that being done and still nades on board that Rejects has to dance around. The drone will be able to spot attacking and gets eliminated right away. Good drone work, being able to slow it down, knowing that they have plenty of time, don't need to rush things and just see the round out to its fullest capacity. Window stuck in the 1v4. Let's see if he can keep this energy going and have a big old clutch. Nope, the air jab will send him flying back into the wall. And an easy cleanup for Talon. Just great utility work overall. That's what you expect to see. There is nothing that you can do as, as a defense there. They, they put everything they can, but to yeah. see that clear come in, all the flash binds, the stuns, and then the nade just go flying. What can you do against it? Perfectly played by Talon. All credit to them. Love to see that main stairs work. That was the kitchen sink. It really was. Everything was thrown from, from, from both sides. We saw Reject heavily bolster that area. ADS, Wamai. Keep a barriers. Keep a barriers. Global shield. Global shield. Banshee. There was everything mm -hmm. there. Everything you could have wished for, you had. You had all the tools at your disposal. I think they used six flashes and like two concussions and then the nade hit. And then the nade hit. All that. Then we, we, we had the Flores drones prior to that. The Flores drones to remove a lot of the utility that got rid of, uh, I think, one of the ADSs. It got rid of the barricade and the, and the Kiba. So fantastic there from Talon. And it's in direct contrast to how we saw Reject starting off. Reject really struggled against that utility game, didn't they? They just weren't really anywhere to be found dealing with the attacker utility, and they found a, found a lot of their success through rush rounds and through aggression. The cheese, as we like to call yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it, it works, doesn't it? Um, and for a round for Talon that, you know, maybe didn't look to start off uh, fantastically, they've certainly managed to salvage and then some. They've leveled it up now, 4-4. It's back to being anybody's. Yeah. I mean, Demic. 
since that kind of rehost, look at him, seven kills, obviously, yeah. had prior to it. He's been a big standout player, as we know, that, you know, probably the best player that we've seen uh, for Talon. He's, I think, in sixth place is Oli, so not quite the top five in the region, but still very, very close to that. And yeah, he's showing up again. Maybe this is his day where he wants to try and push into that top five. Certainly could be a possibility for him, but he's making things work at the moment. So another attack comes in for Talon. It will be onto that kitchen again. Kitchen has been very weird today. We haven't really seen teams go with a more traditional route of going above, using the sledge, using the buck, clearing away the utility in the site, and then moving into laundry, getting that plant down. Now we're seeing these sides really trying to hit more off the other rooms, the more exterior rooms. You're looking towards laundry, pantry, uh, that single window that jumps into the storage room. These areas of the map that we don't really see be pressured by attackers all too often now, all of a sudden they're having a big upheaval. Would you say that there's an operator that you bring sometimes when things maybe aren't going your way? In terms of defense? Yeah. Don't make me say it. If, if you know, there's something that you feel like you could do to slow down people or play a little bit more aggressive, great opener there from Take onto oh. Demi. Going to find himself too as well as Marvel comes in in an and attempt down. to pick the refrag up. Hedy. He's been downed. I'm not sure if he was down from our favorite, you know. Was he down from the cap can? Has he been down by a cap can? I sincerely hope he has. No, no, no chance. He's mind. outside. <laughs> never mind. Must have been something else. Soldier is going to be looking to move in to see if he can at least get into a position to assist. And he's going to have to. As the players are falling like flies, this is a one versus five here. Soldier picks himself one onto Take. Is he going to be able to find himself a second? Has Ooh. to double check every <laughs> single doorway for the threat of those entry denial devices. Will be able to revive his teammate and take a little bit of stock. But with 50 seconds and a less than full health side, this is going to be a difficult two versus four demo. Yeah, I don't really know what, what's happened here for Talon. Just losing players left, right and center. Obviously, Take being able to get gift a free kill, but then to find the second kill is really surprising winning it against the Sophia LMG as well. Yeah, all credit to him. He's just, he just hit his shots and he's won those engagements. It happens sometimes, but yeah, Talon should be refragging that a lot better, but it just hasn't worked for them. And as soon as that opening double call happens, where do you go from there? You know, wh where do you go from there? Talon just in the mods, down goes head. He sure got picked up and he didn't last long. And Soldier, who has been the only player to get a kill, doesn't find a second. Nikki's there. Just has that confidence, can swing freely. Well, rejects. The defense working really well for Kitchen, but to be honest, Ollie, it leaves a bit of a sour taste just of how things have went for this game where it has been very close. That seems like a full backpedal all of a sudden from Talon. They were really getting a good rhythm going. And then for a round like that to happen where it was just dead after the first two kills is really, really surprising. That's the whoopsie round, isn't it? That's the, we took our eye off That's the ball. That's just a go next. That, yeah. As soon as there are two kills, go next. Yeah. Run in, go next. We, we took our eye off the ball for a moment and things really went from bad to worse. You were trying to bait me into a cap can conversation. But I mean, we didn't even need to get there, which is probably a good thing. Oh but dear. I really like how Rejects have just been able to once again flip that switch and turn it around. And I think it comes back to the mental game that they're bringing. These guys are never down until they are out. Mm -hmm. I, I can see by your expression, and the fact that you've got one hand on your head. Um, it's not quite a hands in or head in hands moment, but it's, it's halfway there. Anything you want to talk about, Demo? Maybe a bit of a Tuchanka conversation? My most hated operator. I, for those who don't know, I do not like Tuchanka. I think everything that he is, Smoke does better. Destructibility, Smoke has a shock and can do that. Not as quick. Doesn't matter. You can still do it. Deniability, Smoke does it better. These little fire launchers do about five damage a second. That's nothing. You see a sea of flames, you can run through that. Tachanka, too slow. Automatically, he is he's a one speed already in the bad brackets for me. <laughs> there is just so many things I just do not like. Deployable shield, what does smoke have? Exactly. Everything that the Tachanka stands for, smoke's done it first and done it so much better. So the whole idea about this bomb site, it is a living room, which is what we have to mention, Ollie. This is yeah. usually the fourth child in the villa that just nobody likes. Nobody likes this child because it is so difficult to defend, mostly because there's a raging blind spot. If you actually look at 
the living room side of things, there is a massive brick wall that you cannot shoot through and a team can plant from very, very easily. And that's why it's very difficult. What is going on here for Nikki? He is looking to swing out into the balcony. How has he gotten away with that? We saw such How's a heavy died? stack up of players there from town. There was a nade at his feet that was glowing red and he's just Should strolled have to away from it. Like, I just don't get it. How has he lived? Window is going to be almost the second line of defense. He's going to be playing inside of the vault. Those important lines of sight that have been opened up with uh, labor and love from the Tachanka are really going to provide quite a done? bit here. It's going to deny a little bit of area. And I think that that's something that they're going to be looking to try and do is continually area deny. That's something that Smoke can't do is deny for long periods of time like he can with this launcher. Candy going to pick himself up a kill there on just the swinging. soldier. Really just making that Alder go burr as he just fires shots in and down. Demic, not sure if he knows where that kill came came in from another fumble on this statue sorry study door but it will result in a kill and a clean up there talon still not looking too pretty as elsewhere approaches onto the site have been met with quite a lot of resistance misa almost certainly going to get swung by 90 he does pick up the kill inside of games though and window isn't going to risk taking that sorry take isn't going to risk taking that challenge Damn it, going to be left to try and flood see, on in now. See what I mean? Now given no option though, look at how deep he's been forced to push and he doesn't have the diffuser. Tachanka can just continually block off that line well, of sight. Sneak plant. Misa now going to start to try and open up the wall. Those Selmas are going to be letting D Demic out as well, giving him a bit of an option Where's to rotate. That Tachanka has been so threatening there. He's actually had to use those Selmas to get himself back out again. A bit of a ring around the rosy. I'm not sure why you would go back upstairs after I already know. dealing with that. Obviously, you've got the threat of the vertical. Yeah. But that's just, you know, we've not been able to achieve this job. I've got to go down and save Demic and get him out of dodge. Then I'm going to go back upstairs and try and pick up the kill. And all of that is sound. All of that is time. And all of it leads to a match point here for Reject. There's not enough time, I feel, sometimes for me. Because there's just so much that happened. Say it. Right. <laughs> so... Not the greatest bomb sites for defense. Typically, you have to put all of your eggs into an upstairs hold because you need to try and use the verticality, deny pe people just walking in and planting, which, to be fair, happened. We've seen that in the late game. They had holes above being able to stop that plant going down, so that's why we've seen Misa then had to run all the way back up and then try and challenge, but then there was no time anyway, so if we've got that kill, it would have made a difference. They still would have lost a round. But if you look at the actual opening for Talon, if you're trying to take control of this bomb site, you commit to upstairs. If you take upstairs, the whole thing crumbles. Everything yeah. crumbles. If you try and go direct without taking above, the holes above are going to be able to shut you down. You need to take above in that element. And to not see Talon go for that and almost just try and walk into sight, it's not going to work. Yeah. I think something that we're seeing here a little bit, especially in this game, is that sure, you can have a really good plan, but you also need to know every single step. So it's not just take ground floor and then plant. It's, you, you know- You need to take above. You gotta, t you, gotta s you gotta start with, we need to take above and then we need to take ground floor and then we need to plant. Then we can get in onto the site. And it just feels like, you know, doing this and then having these two different teams that are gonna go off and do one thing here and one thing there, it's not really working all too well at the moment. Talon do have an opportunity though. This is where they saw success demo. Mm. One thing that we credited them on was their use of utility, particularly on this site, in terms of dealing with those bulletproof shield. Uh, sorry, the uh, bulletproof shields, the banshees, and the keeper barriers. Look Fortunately, there's no keeper barriers here for them. But Demix just strolled in and picked he up a couple of utility. pieces of, of Wamis and a couple of ADSs and stuff. How, how's he been allowed? <laughs> I don't know, there should be vertical holes above that from happening to stop that from just a player simply walking in. So yeah, this does leave them now in a, in a bad position only. We mentioned that they can burn through, you know, the full setup. How are they going to be able to stop, you know, the half setup happening right now for them? Nikki, you can understand whenever things aren't going well, he's then trying to swing as Utility gets dumped in, hopefully trying to find a kill. But Demic, who has been on his game so far today, takes advantage of that, swings in, gets an easy kill, and, and already rejects this main stairs is crumbling and there's still half the round to go. Candy going to see if he can get anything out on the balcony. It's always a risky one because you know there's likely going to be a player on either side. But he's not really got any safety to fall back onto on those main stairs. Retreats himself back into the site. C4 could be big here if timed correctly, but it's shot out of the air. Marble, he can just 
burst that LMG as much as he likes, announcing his entry uh, to the top of those main stairs. His teammates still trying to push the way in through study. Claymore can get placed out now as well to assist with any of that flanking potential. And the defenders again, they're just being pushed and forced back into the site a little bit deeper still fighting. every single step. Window He's going to pick one up in return. So we can hear that Rotero drone pinging off just in an attempt to remove a little bit of the utility. No hard breach on the side of the yeah. attack, which is probably what we have to question now. Without having the hard breach, sure, you've done really well to actually get a bit of a foothold. You've got, you know, that beachhead established. You've got main stairs control. But now the defenders can just hide. They can just hide behind these reinforced walls. Vault has become a very difficult position that we know that players have to deal with. And a shotgun Ooh. is there. Salty being able to swing for all these worth and find a freebie. Taki, well, the easiest kill for him all day. And they almost line up. But no, Misa is there. But Salty again with the shotgun just keeps on swinging. And, and another one. No, Misa will get the refrag. But a 1v2 rushes in to open arms for rejects. And they will take the victory on Villa. A great hold. Oh, it didn't look good for them for the majority of, of really that round. It started off very bad for them. That main stair's not working out, but my, oh my, what a way to pull things back. They knew that, hey, we're in the mud here. We need to get out of it. And they just started swinging. And look at exactly what that means to the team as well. Window giving us a big old cheer. Of course, we did have a little bit of a re 